controversial than the modern triple A industry. But I'm not here to discuss the modern industry's excesses and horror shows, because back in the day, arcade games were a lot less story driven and a lot more coin guzzly. All of which brings us to today's subject, Wreck-It Ralph. <laughs> Released in 2012, Wreck-It Ralph is the tale of a video game villain and his dissatisfaction with his lot, leading to an incredible adventure in a candy-themed racing world. Along the way we meet Fixit Felix Jr., a tough-as-nails soldier from an FPS, and even a bitter old supervillain with his own agenda. Receiving generally positive reviews, and coming from the in-house team at Disney, it would seem to be a surefire hit. And for once, the home version doesn't look any different. So get your 10p pieces ready for the arcade adventures of... Wreck-It Ralph. Meet Ralph, main enemy of Fix-It Felix Jr. For 30 years, his job has been to oppose the fixing of nice land apartments. But Ralph wants more out of life. So then, when Ralph mentions that he doesn't want to be the bad guy anymore, the phrase going turbo is mentioned. Going turbo refers to the star of Turbo Time, Turbo of course, who loved the attention of being top of the arcade. However, when Litwax, the arcade where this entire movie takes place, took delivery of a Road Blasters machine, Road Blasters became top of the arcade and Turbo Time became rather unloved. Turbo was jealous of all the attention that Road Blasters was getting, and Game Jumped, with a view to taking over Road Blasters and becoming top of the arcade once more. However, Turbo's folly resulted in both machines, Turbo Time and Road Blasters, being put out of order and being removed from the arcade. This is why going turbo is such a bad idea. But Turbo's story does not end here, my friends. The rest of the game's cast is celebrating the 30th anniversary in style. But when Ralph turns up, it's just one disaster after another. And one mean comment, coupled with a chance meeting at Tapper's, sets Ralph on the path to a shiny medal all of his own. Now, the medal Ralph seeks is located in the game Hero's Duty, where your commanding officer, Tamora Calhoun, leads you against the monstrous cybugs. Calhoun is cold and bitter because of her own folly. For you see, on the day she was to be wed to her love, one, Dr. Brad Scott. She didn't check the perimeter for cybugs. And wouldn't you know it, they converged on the chapel where the ceremony was to take place and ate Dr. Scott whole. Oh. While back in his own game, a lack of villain doesn't make for much of a game. And when Cubert brings the bad news. Yeah, so. This movie pretty much relies, if you haven't already noticed, on the idea that video game characters are more than just a collection of electrons, pixels and lines of code. Felix goes to search for his errand friend. <laughs> Some friend? Why, I'd be willing to bet that Felix hasn't spent a single moment down with Ralph, down at the dump where Ralph lives. That's half the reason that Ralph was feeling so undervalued in the first flipping place. 
because nobody was coming down to see him and be his friend outside of work. Atop the tower floats the medal Ralph craves. But Ralph is a clumsy sort, and his medal dreams are short-lived. <laughs> The pod finally crashes down in Sugar Rush. Would it be terribly cliche of me to wish Ralph happy landings? Where we meet our other protagonist, Vanellope. She wants the medal too. But Felix and Calhoun aren't far behind. Over on the track, Vanellope doesn't appear to be welcome. But a gloopy Ralph is all the distraction she needs. Now then, Vanellope Von Schweetz. When first we discover this ten-year-old brat with dirty hair, she's seemingly a glitch. An extraneous character created from ultimately unused code who was never meant to see the light of day. This is actually not the case because... Ah. But we'll get to that. Ralph is taken to King Candy's castle. But his majesty is no help. Escaping into the undergrowth, Ralph witnesses the true face of Sugar Rush. Bullies. Okay, so I will spare you a doozy of a rant and simply state the patently obvious platitude that picking on others for their innate flaws is seriously not cool. And so, Ralph grudgingly agrees to help Vanellope build a new cart and win a race. Ralph and Vanellope sneak into the cart bakery and bake a cart. I love it! But security is soon alerted and our heroes escape to the underground, where Vanellope learns to drive. And so our heroes prepare to head out. But King Candy has a grim task for Ralph. So then, how did King Candy recover Ralph's Hero's Duty Medal? Well, he has access to Sugar Rush's code base. One of the perks of royalty, or so you'd think. Ah, but we'll get to that. For now though, let us consider the grim task that is charged to Ralph by King Candy. For you see, King Candy argues that Vanellope, were she allowed to race, would attract the dreaded out of order sign with her glitching. And as glitches are unable to leave their games, Vanellope would die along with Sugar Rush, were it ever to be unplugged. None of this is actually true, of course, save that glitches can't actually leave their games, but again, we'll get to that. And so, Ralph makes a grave mistake. Which is compounded when Ralph discovers that Felix left their game to find him. But looking out on his reward, Something catches our protagonist's eye. As you know, Vanellope would seem to be a glitch character, who was never meant to see the light of day. But if this is the case, then what is she doing on the side of the cabinet? It may be the case that the cabinet art was designed before the final roster was actually set. Or perhaps the whole story is a lie and Vanellope actually was meant to race after all. And so, Ralph heads back to Sugar Rush to find Felix and fix the mess he made. And so, Vanellope finally enters the race. But there's another problem. Now, if you remember Ralph's rather shambolic exit from Hero's Duty after taking the medal, he ended up with a cybug stuck to his face. In my research, I've learned that it's the case that cybugs don't actually know that they're just characters in a game due to defective programming. Therefore, if they were to ever get into another game, they would breed and multiply 
and cause havoc. Such is the case with the cybug that is in Sugar Rush. And it's going to cause a candy bug apocalypse. Let's watch! <laughs> and worse, the plain truth is, King Candy was turbo all along. Vanellope escapes his clutches right into a candy bug apocalypse. When Ralph looks to create a beacon, he comes face to face with an unholy hybrid. Oh, look at that! It's... But Wreck It Ralph won't be denied. Which is bad news for Turbo. In Hero's Duty, the Cybug's programming can be overridden by a beacon of light. The beacon of light Ralph approximates in Sugar Rush is a Diet Cola hot spring with Mento stalactites. And so, Sugar Rush is reset. And Princess Vanellope is restored. And so our movie ends as Ralph embraces his role as bad guy, even if he's not a bad guy. So if you're wondering, Ralph took pity on the refugees of an unplugged Cubert and invited them to Fix-It Felix Jr., where they spiced up a brand new bonus level. Thus, Fix-It Felix Jr. is more popular than it has been in years. And there's your happy ending. Anyway, that was Wreck-It Ralph. And, again, this one was kind of a first watch for me. And you know what? I'm gonna put this one into the House of Love. So here we are. Disney. It doesn't get more family friendly than this. But that wouldn't matter a jot if this movie was anything short of good. Thankfully, it doesn't have to rely on just nostalgia to lure me in. Firstly, let's address the elephant in the arcade. Yes, Sarah Silverman's Vanellope Von Schweetz is annoying. And in any lesser film, this character would garner a lot less, if any, audience sympathy. But for one, this is no lesser film. And for two, this character is supposed to be annoying. She's a ten-year-old sugar adult brat. They're not exactly dignified company, you know. The rest of the performances are equally affecting. John C. Riley's Ralph, the beaten down workaday villain. Felix, the U-rated good guy with his magic hammer. Jane Lynch's hard as nails Calhoun. And who knew that Alan Tudyk could so readily ape the mannerisms of the legendary Ed Wynn? Or that he had the chops to so successfully make the clowny character of King Candy so very, very menacing. And these characters do play off of each other and bond together and it makes some scenes heartbreaking, and others punch the air joyous. The flow of the movie does tend to fragment around the point where they reach Sugar Rush, which is the location for the bulk of the scenes. And really, this is more Vanellope's movie than Ralph's, as her story, the story of a forgotten princess and a usurper in code, tends to take over once Ralph lands in her game, and it does feel like a Disney movie, princess and all, but this is no bad thing, as outside of the plot there are some good solid character moments, even if some of them are just setting up the finale. And of course, we have to mention the fact that so many actual arcade characters actually appear in this movie, and non-arcade characters Sonic the Hedgehog, even if for the most part their appearances are brief, and are only for recognition's sake. Overall then, while it may be good to be bad, you don't have to be a bad guy to be a bad guy. I am Funky Monkey, and that's good. I will never be the Nostalgia Critic, and that's not bad. There is nobody that I would rather be than me. And with these words, I wish you good days and great entertainment. So long, folks!